So I, um, I first got into tattooing when I was about seven years old. And it was at um, a party at my aunt and uncle's house, I think. Um, and I saw my uncle standing by the pool and I just remember seeing his back piece. You know, he's got he's got the crucifixion tattooed on his back and I just remember that leaving quite a lasting impression on me, thinking that that looked really fucking cool. That was like one of the earliest moments that I saw a tattoo and, and thought like that's, you know, I want to do that one day. And then it didn't really sort of happen until, you know, I would draw, I would doodle all the time as a kid. Um, but then when I went to art college, I was studying fine art and I just wasn't, didn't really feel like I was learning what I wanted to learn. And um, so I dropped out and I actually went and started working for my, for my father at the time, who was a picture framer at the time. And um, so we started like, I started working there and I started drawing tattoos a lot and getting tattooed a lot and saving as much money as I could from what little he paid me. Thanks, Dad. Um, and with that money that I saved up, I went and bought a machine. And, and then I started tattooing um, myself, mostly, from home, and which was, at the time, was the only option I had. I was living out in Slough, and I, you know, getting an apprenticeship was, was back then. This was a decade ago, or 11 years ago. And it just was everywhere I went, it just got fucking shunned out the door, you know, like a few places, like almost kick the shit out of me and then i and then i went to get a tattoo from steve Byrne at a place called first street and while i was there i bought a portfolio with me which had i think like two or three sets of flash so like 15 sheets of flash that i would painted and thomas hooper was there and steve was there and they both liked what i'd done and i think thomas showed them to the owner who's a guy called dante and and i had a message from tom before i got home saying, look, you should come back to the shop tomorrow. The boss wants to talk to you. And, and I thought I was like legit getting my thumbs broken or something. You know, I thought it was like, um, you know, when I walk in there and he's going to berate me for being, you know, a young kid wanting to tattoo. But he was really nice, really kind. And he just told me that I should um, spend more time at the shop. And, uh, you know, under no certain terms, this is not a job, you know, but come come stay at the shop like hang out at the shop get towed at the shop so i did that's all i did and and i was in there like every every waking minute i had really from that point on any day off i had i was at the shop any evening off i had i was at the shop and soon i was sort of like sweeping the floor and and you know cutting tracing paper or running a stencil for somebody and then then that was like answering the phone and and i just sort of stuck around and i tried to not get too in the way but ask a lot of questions so that people sort of knew that I was keen and everybody there knew I wanted to tattoo you know they were under no illusion that that's what I wanted to do they just were sort of tolerating me for a little while and then not long after that he sort of just said look you, you know have you have you got people that want to get tattooed I said yeah I've got loads and he said do them do them at the shop after hours or, or you know when Thomas is around so that's what I started doing and um it was really quick for me, you know, like I, I'd watched a lot of tattoos. I'd got a lot of tattoos at that point already. I was only 18, but I I'd had a lot of tattoo work done. And um, yeah, I just, I just watched and watched and learned and did a few and listened very carefully to what people were telling me was wrong and uh, and asked questions when I didn't know. And I'm still, still fucking asking questions now. <laughs> While I was at the shop, I sort of had been playing music and hadn't been, you know. And so just as I got sort of offered a, a proper job there, the band was kind of like, you know, we were playing more, we were touring more. And then the band started to really pick up speed and, and I got sort of given an ultimatum, like pick the band or tattoo because I was doing like a few more tours at that point. And so I said, cool, tattoo, like, and I quit the band. And then I got a call a couple of weeks later from the boys saying, look, we've got a record label interested in putting the album out, but you've got a single. Like, they, that's, those are the, the terms, you know, he's heard the demo, he loves your voice, he wants you in it, will you do it so that we can get the album out? I was like, yeah, of course. Like, spoke to Danny, he, he was really cool about it. Um, did the album, and it was supposed to be like, do the album, go and do an album tour and then quit again 
for good and they all knew that <clears throat> except we went and did the tour a few people came out a few important people came out uh, before I knew it like we had a few extra other shows booked in and then out of nowhere within like a year, this is like the middle of 2005 or so and then I was about 20 I think and then yeah 2006 like it just fucking blew up and then I had to say to Danny like I'm sorry but you know we've got a record multiple record deals on the table I've got to go and do this thing he was like fuck yeah you, you have to you're going to tour the world you know like go, go and have fun so I did and uh, but I always like tried to pay my dues and whenever I was off tour I'd always go to Fresh Street and, and tattoo there as much as I could um, which was like you know it was nice it was a good um, it was a good setup however you know it musically like I progressed really quickly um, but my tattooing really like it's I think it's only got better in the last year properly because I spent because when I when Pure Love went on hiatus that's when I had like a whole year off just to, and I was tattooing like every week four or five days a week you know and that that's when you can only really get better at something if you're doing it non-stop all the fucking time you know and so it was always like you know I'd been tattooing a long time technically but I think you know my technical ability was probably like sort of half of what I'd actually been tattooing because that's kind of what I, you know I would go on tour for six months and then tattoo for a month and then I'd go on tour for another eight months and then I'd get to tattoo again and it was like so you know years rolled by and I'd probably done like a handful of months of tattooing in, the, in that time you know it got to a point in sort of 2010 when I noticed like a few kids that w had been coming up while I was tattooing in the shop were sort of like way better than me <laughs> all of a sudden I was like fuck how's this happened you know but it's not because I was like sitting around idle like I was fucking touring the whole world like multiple times you know we toured Gallows toured like you know Australia Japan like all over Europe we we toured in America five times, the whole country and Canada, you know, it's like, so I had to, you know, what I sacrificed in, you know, progressing my tattooing quickly, I gained elsewhere. Like I'm, I've, I've seen the whole world pretty much. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it. Like I, you know, I was, I was lucky that the people that I worked with at that shop like they taught me not to fuck people up really early on <laughs> so I knew I could put on a good tattoo and it would stay you know but I just I wanted to be better you know I think it was a drive that I had in me um, and that I don't think that really comes until you've got the time to like sit down and find two new machines and you know try different things out and yeah. that, that that comes from having time tattooing which I've had like now for the past two years I've been tattooing like pretty much every day um and i feel like now my tattooing's like never never been better really i had a bit of an epiphany last year the end of last year um when i realized that actually like i, th I think the reason that i've that i'm here is to perform um i love tattooing i respect it massively um I I'm, I feel really lucky that I'm able to do it at all, you know, and I feel even luckier that I'm able to do it in the capacity that I do, which is kind kind of like, you know, part time really. Like, and I know that offends a lot of people. Um, it does upset a lot of people, and and it and it and it does make it hard for me to sort of hold down a place in a shop full time because I think, you know, it's it's difficult if you're an owner to like give someone time off all the time to go and do something else and then you've got all the other tattooers in the shop saying well i want fucking six months of holidays but it was never holidays for me you know like that was it was always work but um regardless like i f feel really lucky that i'm here now I'm, I'm at song blue and max and i have been friends for a long time and he really like he understands like the benefit of both you know like i bring a lot of people to this shop that probably wouldn't come here you know but they come because they want to get a tattoo from me and it's not necessarily a lot of the time it's not even that 
you know my tattoos are better than anybody it's just it's just because they loved a song that i wrote you know that a, a music that i wrote connected with them and they want to meet me and talk to me and they want a tattoo from the person that wrote the song you know it's just it's just lucky that i tattoo you know the amount of people i see that go and get gallows tattoos or pure love tattoos or now even people are getting ra rattlesnakes tattoos already i love it you know and i'm really i'm really I've always been proud of that. Like, I said to someone the other day, like, when, when you're a tattooer, you have this really intimate relationship with a person. It's like one on one, you talk about the ideas and you try and complete it. But it's very much like a solo interaction between you two, you know? And when you paint, like, you can, you spend a lot of time invested in this thing and then you hang it up and you might never see anybody look at it, you know? And when you do, you you won't really know what they're thinking unless you ask them you know and when you play music you have all of those things and so you have like the one-on-one -on -one connection with someone when you're singing it directly to them or they're singing it back to you you can put it out there and they can listen to it and you can never ever know or you can have like that one-on-one -on -one connection with like five thousand people at the same time live you know so i think you know, nothing really satisfies my soul the way going out on stage and playing does. That's just, you know, and it's taken me a decade and a, and a lot of, like, internal debate to find that out. The whole time I was in Gallows, like, I was very young, I was, I was fucking loudmouth little bastard, and I just was convinced that, like, I didn't deserve it, you know? I was really, really, truly convinced that, and and I really, I, I regret that a little bit now, because it, maybe it coloured um, a lot of my time in that band negatively for me, and may, maybe even for some of the other guys. Um... And it definitely made it quite hard, you know, being in that band at points. But I love the band. Like I fucking love the music. I'm incredibly proud of the music we made still. Um, I just wish I'd been able to enjoy it a little more while I, while I was in it, you know. But that's why Rattlesnakes is so important to me now. Because, like, I had this sort of breakthrough. Just as my daughter was born, I, I, I was just... I said to my wife, like, I think I have really... I'm really sorry, <laughs> but I think I need to start a new band. And she, she like had, I, I didn't know what I was expecting. I didn't know what her reaction would be, you know? And I was really nervous because we literally just had a baby. I think, I think my daughter was like seven days old or something crazy. <laughs> and so here I am like, uh, I, I really want to start a new band and go on tour and, you know, and not be around like, and she was like, she had this massive fucking smile on her face and she was like, she gave me this big hug and was just so like overjoyed that I had finally fucking seen what she had seen all along, which, you know, she always, when it, when we shut pure love down, she was like, this is a mistake. You're going to regret this. And I was like, no, no, I'm not, I'm not blah, blah, blah. And she she was adamant like you need to try and find a way to work both of these out together and pure love couldn't because you know Jim, jimmy and i we're, we're transatlantic it's difficult to make a relationship like that work for a long time but with this with rattlesnakes like you know a lot of stuff happened last year that that sort of led me to a point where i just i really felt like i've got a i have some shit i need to say Now that I've now that I've got the band and I'm like we're playing shows again and people are like really fucking I think they're really getting behind it. Like it I mean the shows we played on that tour were fucking bananas. Like it was fucking crazy. And to think we only had three songs out at the time. Every show was rammed, like kids were going off, like you know, we just put our London show up and it sold out in three hours. Like it it's it's three hundred tickets like in three hours you know like it's nuts to me that people are getting behind the band so quickly i don't know if it will do well i don't know if people will like it for a long time but i know that i'm not going to take it for granted and i will give fucking like everything i have 
of myself to 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 it to make sure that like when people come and see it like they leave feeling like they've really like got something out of it because I do every time now like I never ever thought I'd have the opportunity to do this again do you know what I mean so to have this not only have the opportunity but to be in the right mind space for it as well you know to really appreciate it and to feel like lucky to have it um you know, it's, I said to a guy the other day, I was like, look, you know, when I was in Gallows, we were fucking young. We had like all the cards, but we didn't know what game we were playing, you know? And then when I was in Pure Love, I like knew what game I was playing, but I got dealt the worst fucking hand possible, you know? So I just tried to make plays from these terrible cards. And then with Rattlesnakes, it was like, I went out, I took a breather and I've come back in and I know what game I'm playing. And I sit at the table and I get dealt like the best fucking cards in the deck. And then it's just like, okay, well, what route do you want to take with this? So now I'm just like really enjoying it and having fun and just trying not to put a foot wrong. I know it's cliche, but like I feel much more mature now. And I mean, I'm a dad. Uh, that puts everything in perspective to begin with. Um, you know, I've bought a house, I'm married, um, I'm in a really good place with my art and my tattooing and, and, and my music, you know, and it's, music is very much therapy for me and it's been, it's been amazing the past six months. You know, that we only started this band in February, so it's like kind of fucking crazy, yeah, like, we had no songs before that time and now we've got an album coming out next month but it's spontaneous it's really nice to listen to the record now and like i'm excited to hear what people think you know i really am because i love it <laughs> i think it's fucking great the thing that i've always loved mm. about everything you've done music wise seems really genuine thank you it seems real you know what i mean you get a real yeah. vibe i think that's why i, th- I, love I appreciate that and but that is like you know my whole life really all i've tried to do is um is is just be me you know like be be real like but be but just be honest you know and like when i left gallows that was honest like i I didn't like the music they wanted to make and so you know instead of fighting and dragging us ourselves through the mud like i just thought like i'll leave and you guys can do your thing and i'll go and do mine and and I already had Pure Love started as a side project at that point. But it, when I left, it just meant then, well, I'll just put all my effort into this, you know. So it's, um, and now with Rattlesnakes, it's the same thing, you know. Like I'm really lucky that I had Pure Love because now I'm a much better performer. Like I'm well-rounded, I can sing now. But like also, you know, at the, I left Gallows at the height of their success I'd like I'd like to think it was such a wake up call dude like it was like fucking sitting in a sports car 100 miles and hitting a wall you know like it was like what the fuck there's like 50 people at our gigs like they don't know any of the fucking words like they're all kind of looking like they might want to kick the shit out of me at any minute and that's starting a new band you know it's a grind in the beginning and especially because nobody wanted me to do it like n- like you know, you could see people coming out of respect almost because they like my whole band, you know. And they'd leave and they'd be like, yeah, that was cool. Like, I, you know, you, it was great. Like, But, you know, the music's not my thing. But like, you can, but it was a fun show, you know. And that was like so many people said that to me. Like, And I just like music. I like all music, you know. Like on the new, on the new Rattlesnakes record, it's mostly like, you know, violent punk rock, you know. But then there's a blues track on there because I love blues. There's a 12 bar blues and I've, I've only ever done whatever the fuck I want really. And that's like, like, you know, people, I remember when we started Pure Love, people were like, what a sellout. And I was thinking, man, I just, like, I, this band's made no money. Like, Gallo's made like a million pounds. Like, why, why are you not talking to, why was I not a sellout then? Because that's when we actually did sell out. <laughs> was when we got off this shitload of money and we took it. Like, you know, Rattlesnakes has fucking just cost me money so far. Like, I'm sort of, yeah, 15 grand in the hole. Of <laughs> and uh, I'm sorry, Sarah, I love you. Um, we'll get that money back soon, I promise. Do you have a record label for this? We, we do. It's 
it's not a record label. It's a company called Cobalt, and they're a label services company. So what they do is they essentially they provide the services that a record label would provide for you. But there's like no huge amount of money up front, and you retain the rights to your songs, which is incredible. Like it means that like if the band does well, you know, then we're in a much better position. And even if the band doesn't do well, I'll own something that I've made. I don't own any any Gallo songs, any Pure Love songs. They're owned by record labels, and they will be for the next fucking hundred years. You know, which is really depressing. But with Rattlesnakes, like. You know, it got to the point where I, I sort of just said said to my friend Dean, like, I want to do this thing, I'm going to fund it as long as I can. Um, it's not a money thing. It's just like, I, I want to I be in a band on my terms, you know? And that's what Route Snakes is. Like, it's, it's the real deal. Like, it is, it's completely under my control. So, like, that's, like, a dangerous place to be because <laughs> I, I feel like I've... Um, like I said before, like now I understand what I'm doing better. Like I don't know, I just I just feel I feel really lucky that I've been given the chance again, you know? I mean I I it amazes me how they can get up on stage and and even believe that they have a shred of originality or even a shred of fucking talent there. Where's my fucking mouth? You can still give it some mouth. I it think comes like it, it I guess it really depends, like, on how bad they are. <laughs> and But it's all fucking relative, innit? Like, they probably watch me and just think, God, he's fucking shit and he can't sing, or why is he doing that? Um, but I think now, like, I'm at a point where I almost feel like it's better to let the music do the talking or the performance do the talking. Do you know what I mean? Like, There's a bit more of proving ground, sort of. Yeah, back when it was gallows. And yes, totally. You know, like we we were. I've never I've never been afraid of making a statement. You know, and back then, like they, we toured with a lot of bands that we just shouldn't have toured with, and I still think they're terrible. I still hate their fucking music. Um, but they were doing their thing. That was them, whether it was real or not. Like it was that was what they were doing, and we were doing our thing. And now, like, I, you know, I'm doing my thing with rattlesnakes and. I'm just gonna go on stage every night and play as fast and loud and hard as as is humanly possible for me. And I'm gonna smash the fuck out of everything in my path. And hopefully like that will, hopefully, maybe like it's too romantic of me, but I wanna be like, I wanna go and play with all those terrible bands again. Do you know what I mean? Because we have no, we have no production. Do you know what I mean? We have, we have, There's four members in the band. It's one guitar, one bass, one drums, and me. And no fucking light show. No, no like, no scrims, no backdrop. Like, at the moment, you know. And we just fucking get out there and hammer out our songs as quickly as we can. And it's frenetic and it's furious and it's like really cathartic and it feels amazing. And it's an experience for me and when I like finish I'm fucking spent I'm exhausted and I like watch some other bands and I just think fucking hell you just it's like by numbers for them do you know what I mean it's like a you know this is the bit where we do a spin and this is the bit where we jump off the fucking monitor and like that's cool like it's but it's more of a sh you're more of a like a, a boy band like a a set up thing, you know, like to tick tick in the boxes and you know, that's cool if that's your if that's your deal. But I'm in a rock and roll band, you know? Like I'm in a fucking punk rock and roll band, like and that's all I've ever wanted to be in. I I, I have no um, interest in that shit. So but I could talk for fucking years about why I think they're bad and why I think we're we're better. Um, but instead, now now I think is the time to just go out and play better, and fucking show all their fans like I, what I want to do is like have their fans leave their shows, and go home, and find our record, and listen to it again once just because they're like, man, that was fucking crazy. That 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 guy, that band are nuts, you know. Let's I want to listen to that again. Then listen to it, and then find something in the music that connects with them better than the fucking music they've been listening to. 
so that we can spawn a whole new generation of kids that love punk music. Because that's what I would prefer. I'd, I'd rather have like, I would rather have a whole world of like punk bands doing this like scrappy fucking shit that isn't doesn't look professional and just but is honest and real. Just 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 go up and play the fucking songs and like and and play them like you fucking mean it, you know. But I don't know. Maybe people just don't have anything to say anymore. Who knows? What's your worst stage injury? I've broken ribs. I've given myself whiplash. I broke my own nose. Um, I smashed, kind of shattered my knee um, on like a bottle. Like in the, I like fell on the way to stage, <laughs> and I fell into this pile of mud which had a glass bottle in it and it just splintered all in my knee right before we went on so I was like pouring a bottle of water over it pulling glass out and then duct taped it up and went on stage it was fucking disgusting so you just wanted you asked for a juggernaut tattoo and you also said that you liked the kind of metropolis tattoos that I've been working on where I'm sort of melding like oversized classic tattoo designs with these tiny little you know sort of I don't know like little cities or little stations or I don't really know what they are yet I'm still not sure but when you asked for a juggernaut one I was like immediately a skull popped in my head with like a fucking prison tower in it. that was what that was all all I knew you know I was like that would be fucking cool so so when when you came in today and we talked about it a bit more and you said you were keen like I just thought like I'll put something in that has like a furnace in there and a helipad and and then when we started tattooing it I just thought I'll put a gallows in because there's a little there's a line in Juggernaut about like yeah so I I really love it man I think I think it's um and I'm glad that we did it just black and grey in the end I think you know if we had tried to squeeze too much colour in there it would have taken away from the design but I'm really happy. So thanks for coming to get it done, by the way. I appreciate that.